Thanks so much for joining us. Can, can you guys hear us? Are we on? Is this? Yes. yes, you can. Fantastic. Well, congratulations and, and welcome. The show is fantastic. Season one, 10 episodes. Uh, season two has just been announced coming up next year. And one of the, yeah, please. <laughs> and one of the things I love about this show is that there are so many levels to everybody, specifically Ruth, and she has got um, so much ahead of her, we feel. We feel that in the character. When you first read her and read the script, what were your thoughts about Ruth? Uh, I thought she was so much fun. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, it, it, sorry, I get very nervous, like, speaking. When I don't have lines, I have, like, if it's just me, I just get so nervous. Like, I'm fine reciting other people's words, but not my own. Um, <clears throat> I remember, so Ruth wasn't in the first episode, um, but when I got the audition, it was just a scene. It wasn't even in any of the Ozark episodes. It was just, they did a mock scene. And I just remember reading the mo the scene and just thinking like, oh my God, this character is amazing. And she's smart and she's gritty and she's and she's fun. And one hand she she cares, but the other hand she doesn't care. And I just, I don't know, I was just kind of fascinated by her. And I just, even the first time I read that one scene, I just was like, I have, I want to get this. And I never get like that. I had such an obsession with her from the moment I read Ruth on the page. And I'm very good in, you know, auditioning and letting things go. And, you know, time will tell, whatever. But I just remember thinking, I was like, if I don't get this job, I'll have a hard time watching someone else do it. Because I, I really loved her. <laughs> Well, a lot. <laughs> there's so she's a criminal mastermind in the making, and yet she is also. We have sympathy for her. We understand her in some ways through your performance. We're sort of able to see kind of these glimmers into a certain type of American life and a certain way that somebody wants to get out of an American life and into something else. Um, when I mean, we sort of say a criminal mastermind in training in a way, and that sort of we sort of throw that phrase around. But it, it's really like she's got um, she's got a plan to get herself into another into another strata, into another place, and obviously using using uh, Jason Bateman's character, Marty, as a bit of a crutch, right? Yeah, he's so great on the show. Like, he was really, no, seriously, like, give it's a round of applause. applause, obviously, like, for Laura Linney. He Jason is, Bateman. no, yeah. he and Laura Linney, I mean, everybody, it was just so incredible on the show. And not only is he just the most amazing scene partner, but he's also just, like, the most incredible director, and he will be working with you, and in the middle of the scene, He'll be like, say that line one more time. Like, just directing you. And it's like, what? I'm like, oh my God. Like, wow. Like, I just forget you're doing two jobs at once. And it's it's amazing. Um, I'm sorry. What was your question? <laughs> the, fact, <laughs> sorry. the fact that she's sort of this, she's not only a kind of a criminal, you know, mass murderer, somebody who's kind of looking at a way to kind of um, work the situation yes, with her family's she, advantage. Yes. But, yeah. She really wants to get out of there. She really, I think the thing thing that you feel bad about with Ruth is that she doesn't she, you just she she becomes a like almost like a little girl that she she doesn't want to be there she she wants a way out you know and she doesn't know how to get out so she ends up doing things that are like kind of like a sociopath in a way but you but then <laughs> but the other hand you just you feel really bad for her because there's certain things that you like I don't know you'll see like She'll carry, and this is, but the costume, the costumes are so important when you're filming because you really just get into the character. But even like a, that pink leather bag, you know, because all of her clothes are so bad and they're kind of trashy, but she has this fake pink leather bag because she almost wants nice things. She wants, maybe she wants a real pink leather bag, you know, like she, she, she tries so hard and she kind of, does things and works constantly and and does like physical work and picks up things and does every scene is like Ruth doing something because I don't think she wants people to really know her in a sense because she never wants to seem weak because she's so weak and I think that's that's what makes it kind of complicated. 
there's two things I want to bring up there. One is that uh, you just mentioned in terms of props and costume. There's also this cat watch that you wear on the show, which is terrific, right? Yeah, I insisted so, on the cat watch. Talk to us about the big why. Why did you want that? Well, because, so here's the thing. So things are much more creepy when there's some nice elements to it. Like you can, or like, you know, I was telling you earlier, I was like, you know why dolls are sometimes creepy? Like if you <laughs> are in a room, a dark room with dolls, because you see them all the time. It's super familiar. So I remember thinking like, oh, like I don't want people to only hate Ruth. Like she should have nice things too. Like she should have a little cute cat watch and like like she should have some things that are almost like a, a little girl element and childlike because she still is kind of, she's a child and people have to remember that. And that's why you feel bad for her because she just has bad people around. But it's also, she's not great either, but. <laughs> <laughs> but, but then to, to, to spin off of that, she may be a child, but there are also moments, and I said this to you just now off stage, Julia, is that there are moments when she's sitting in uh, the chair at the strip club that she manages where she reminds me of Michael Corleone. Where there that is, is a, such a compliment. <laughs> a, there is a way where she's just so confident and, and calculating the situation or, you know, the way you kind of move your jaw as you're sort of sitting there in the chair, that she owns the space and she owns the situation um, and that you can see her sort of becoming, kind of coming into her own, right? Yeah. She doesn't want anything to stand in her way. She really doesn't because she can be, in, she doesn't want to get a rep and she doesn't want it to be like, oh, the Langmores anymore. And if someone gets in her way, she has to have an eye on every single person. And I think that's why the uh, her and Marty have this kind of conflict in a way, especially in the beginning of the season, because he kind of underestimates her. And she's like, no, no, I actually am smart, but you know what, I'll play up that I'm dumb just so I can trick you. Yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, it's one more arrow in her quiver, as it were. Yeah, yeah. and I think she gets that from her father, because her father is uh, like that. Yeah. It's a, an amazing performance. Let's talk about the amazing accent that you've got going on there as well, and how you say it. Now, uh, Bill Dubuque, who had spent some time, who's the show's creator, spent some time in uh, Lake of the Ozarks, so he spent some time in Missouri, so he kind of knows that accent. Um, how did you work on that accent, and how did you find it? Funny enough, I did a movie a year before called Tomato Red, and it was a Missouri accent. Mm -hmm. So I did that for like a month. And um, the next year, Ozark audition came up. And I remember I was sitting in the audition room and it was like, you know, New York casting office. It's so tiny. You can hear the other auditioner. <laughs> I'm sure all of you guys know. Um, I don't have to explain. I forget I'm in a room full of actors. <laughs> um, and so, but I remember, I'm like, oh my God, I practiced my acting coach is sitting right there. So I was <laughs> I was like, I was like, God, I practiced with Pam. I was like, I, I only pa practice in a southern accent. What am I gonna do? And I'm hearing everyone else doing like their normal accent. I was like, oh God. So I just went in there and I I did the accent. And because it said Missouri, she was from Missouri, so I just did that accent and um yeah, basically, I I did it once, and I was like, well, I blew it. I mean, he didn't ask me to do it again, so I'm going to go. <laughs> and and then I got a call back, and I was just like, oh, so I guess I'm going to do this accent, and it became a thing. And originally, like, some of the other Langmores, except uh, Mark Menchaca, who plays one of my uncle, he plays Russ. He's an amazing actor. He's from Texas, so he has a southern accent. Um, but they basically, they originally, they weren't even thinking about any sort of accent, and they kind of, you know, Ruth, I guess, I don't know. I don't want to say, like, accent, but... <laughs> no, but it works. Are you good at accents? Because, I, I mean, it's a tricky thing. If you don't, if you can't do it consistently, it's, you know, it, it, it wavers. You do it beautifully. I don't want to say that I am, because maybe there's an accent that I haven't tried yet, and, like, yeah. I don't, I can't do it, so I don't know. I mean... I, I practice, I guess. Not as much as I, I have to start practicing. I'm shooting next week, and I, I should start speaking in a southern accent. <laughs> do, you, so. do you find and, it takes a while to kind of get back into it if you haven't, uh, you haven't done it? No, especially if, I mean, if you play a part for seven months, mm -hmm. you already know how you say every single word in that accent. Uh, but, yeah, it is a little, like, the thought of me going on set next week and doing this part again is a little scary, so... 
you know, we'll yeah. see. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take some questions here that we have from the audience in a moment, but let's talk about how you got into acting. We obviously, I, I saw you first in uh, Martha Mary May Madeline, and yes, and Martha, and, and, I, and I feel like, you know, subsequently Grandma was phenomenal with Lily Tomlin, and there's, Thank yes. You. And we see you do a lot of things, but you were very young. You started acting at about 15, and Martha's like 17. You were like 17, I right? was 16 when Martha. 16, I was amazing. 16, and that was my first movie. And, um, yeah, I mean, the thing that I, I feel like you, every set you go on, you learn from that set, and you don't know what you're learning until the next problem or issue you have. You're like, oh, that, this is kind of a similar situation. So I'm just going to take my past experience with this set and kind of deal with it on this set. Um, but I just, that set, I just learned how to be on a set. I learned what a set was like. I, um, you know, yeah. 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 And you started acting right away, or not, not right away, but at 15, uh, in order to kind of get over some shyness, kind of work on some issues. Is that right? Yeah, I was, I was really shy and I had a, I had a hard time. I even said in the beginning of this conversation, I was like, I don't feel comfortable full speaking like you know I like saying other people's words but yeah I was very shy when I was growing up and um I did it because I have to overcome shyness basically yeah. and it ended up well obviously it's worked out beautifully because all these terrific and now it's the complete over. opposite yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> now you can't be quiet no I think I mean I think that's an interesting thing because I think when there is a a need for an actor to kind of find um something else besides the the performance aspect to it I think you feel that in their performances in some way don't you think they, you feel um a genuine quality in some ways do you agree uh, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. I agree yeah. with that. Yeah. All right, let's take some questions here. It says, uh, one question is, you've done a lot of dramas, uh, like we just mentioned, Sin City, the, the sequel, uh, We Are What We... We are what we see. We are what we are. We are what we are. Okay, they haven't completely, it's hard to read this. And then... Uh, they're, hard, they're hard names. It's okay. They are hard. Yeah, no, but also the handwriting. So somebody needs to work in their handwriting. Do you prefer uh, drama over comedy, or is it just something that uh, kind of fall in your lap over the years, Julia? No, I want to do everything that yeah. challenges me okay. and helps me grow as not only, you know, an actor and an artist, but also as a person. You know, there's certain things that we don't have a normal job, and we can't... That This is how we learn. We learn through experiences you know yeah. um we just we react real life yeah. that's what acting is yeah, yeah. i think though that there's there is something to be said there I, I think you'd be terrific in a comedy and i think that obviously there's elements of comedy in lots of things well, grandma was a but it was a dramedy grandma, exactly yes. exactly you're pregnant teenager in there and i think but also your mom your mom was a comedian in israel is that right she's also sitting here. Oh, let's give a round yeah. of applause to, to mom please uh, <laughs> um, Everyone's here to know. But I feel like there's there's something to be said about um, when you have uh, sort of a sense of comedy in the house or, there, or, or a sense of kind of looking at, at life a certain way. You don't necessarily need to kind of do a comedy or to find comedic moments in darker, <laughs> dramatic films, right? I'm just laughing at my, my house and my child. No, it was a great childhood, but it was, you know, yeah. it was a comedy with my uh -huh. dad's a, a painter and art teacher and my mother was on the Israeli SNL 30 years ago turned therapist and I grew up in New York so you can only imagine <laughs> <Just> <laughs> but it was it, no yeah, yeah. it's not it's not but it's you know I think that's why I'm so lucky that I I got to grow up in that household um with creative household in my own mind and and growing up in a city where you know, every every single day you just walk outside and, and you can make up a story. You'll see someone and you can just think about a scenario like or anything. You know, you, there's so many people here. It's yeah. Are beautiful. you a people watcher? Do you kind of watch people and kind of file them away? I'm going to remember that look or that certain type of thing that they're oh, doing yeah. for later. That's role. where a lot of it comes from. Yeah. It's just sitting on a bench watching yeah. people or just even like... I do this really weird thing too, like if I'm sitting at a diner or something and people are walking past the window, like it's crazy how many people just look in themselves in the <laughs> reflection. <laughs> but like, yeah. but there's certain things and everyone does it. Yeah. It's, you know, it's very, but people are so interesting. That's, that's the point. Like it, that's, that's why the city is so beautiful and so fascinating and it's it's romantic in that sense it's always searching yeah 
Yeah. There's a second part here which says, uh, also, what process uh, do you study and how have you applied it to any projects or roles uh, that you've got, you know, uh, that, that you have done since studying it or coming up? Ask that question one more time. Okay. It's like, what, <laughs> what, what process do you study or have you studied and how do you apply it to your projects or your roles? So I, you know, I didn't go to... Uh, I, you know, because I started when I was 16, so I didn't go to a proper conservatory. I mean, I do have an, I have an acting coach, like I said. Um, but what I do is, you know, the first thing, obviously, you need to learn your lines. Because if you learn the lines fully, you can do whatever you want with the lines. You can cut them out. You can add more in. You can just play along with it. You can go slower. You can whatever. You can do whatever you want. Um, the thing that I do when I'm done learning my lines is uh, in terms of self-work, I have a journal and I personally don't write in a journal as like as me, as Julia, but every single character that I play has their own journal and has a, I'm writing down the relationship that I'm feeling about every single person in the script. And and um, it can even be like, if let's just say like Ruth's mother. Mm -hmm. You don't see or hear about Ruth's mother, but I write about her just so you can have that backstory. So by the time that you're not on set, you're not worrying about what, you know, about thing, like that extra, you wanna have layers. And that's what's gonna give you layers is if you have that journal, having, you know, people have so many thoughts at once. That's the thing. And you're playing people. You're not playing, I'm not playing Julia, playing Ruth. <laughs> I'm reacting real life. Yeah, well, you're, I mean, this performance in Ozark that over the course of these these nine episodes that you've done, are, it's so lived in and it feels so rich and layered. And that obviously is one reason because you're working all these different But I've been signings. doing that since Martha. Oh, wow. Okay. I've been doing yeah. this since I was six. I've been doing the whole journal. And I don't know how the journal thing really came up. I mean, every actor has their journal in acting class and they have, they write things down, but... I think it happened, I think what happened, I was writing things down for my character, but I don't, maybe I was having a bad day. I don't remember, and I started writing down, like, emotionally, <laughs> I don't know. And I was like, oh, I'm writing, maybe I should write down as the character. And I think that's where it came up. Oh, I don't really remember, yeah. you know. Yeah, well, you just said something to me um, before we came on stage about how, like, all the emotions that you f that that you portray as a character are really, um, like, you feel them all. How, They're all about, real. Yeah, they're all real. They're let's talk about that a little real. bit more because it feels so organic in that way. So it doesn't feel like it's just that like, the emotions are part of the role. You're feeling them all at that moment, right? I'm feeling I'm feeling everything yeah. at that moment. Wow. Everything. When I when Ruth is confused and conflicted about something. I'm feeling confused. Um, you know, I'll be on set and I'll have a really hard scene. Um, the only thing that helps me is that if it's a nice production, I mean, I've been very lucky. Every production that I've been on has been so nice. So I've, one, two, three. <laughs> so I've been really lucky in terms of that. But so, you know, I'll have friends on set and they kind of take me out of that moment for a second. Um, but like, sometimes I come home and I'm miserable like miserable because that that's I was feeling that all day because yeah. you have to go there mentally like <clears throat> if you're playing someone and you just lost someone or you're griefing over someone in a scene you have to think of something that really made you upset that you were griefing in past and that you were that you lost a sense of that that you can't fake we're going to touch base on that in a second because just production-wise, it goes relates to our next question from Mary. She says, how was it filming on location, which is in Atlanta, uh, substituting for Missouri? But I would imagine that being on location, I mean, that creates its own sort of sense of community, sense of isolation, and sense of challenges, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I one hand, I kind of like being isolated because it really just lets you kind of let go of your life, your, you know, the life that you have, whatever city you're living in. Um, but I feel like it also, a lot of it depends on the cast and the crew that you have, um, the people that you're surrounded by, the people that you're working with, uh, 
and I've, again, I've been very lucky on every single job that I've been on. Everyone has been so nice and so wonderful and so just like a family and especially Ozark. Um, you know, I'm just, I feel so lucky to have worked with all of these people and they're all so talented, so. And Jason's a funny guy. I'm sure that off off camera, he's he's, he's very he's funny. Like, yeah. He's almost like if it's anything, like I'm the one who's like serious, and he's <laughs> just like super actory or whatever. And he's just like he's like he's like, oh, are you like doing method acting? And I'm like, are you really telling me this before I have to like rig a doc? You know, like. <laughs> like what are some of the biggest challenges for the role that you, I mean, maybe that's rigging a doc. Maybe, maybe there's moments uh, of sort of physical stuff that you've had to do on Ozark, but what was one of the, one or two of the biggest challenges that you've had with that role in Ozark? Oh yeah, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. Um, well, the first month of filming Ozark, I wasn't like filming every day. Um, I was filming like every week or anyway, it wasn't every day the first month, but it was so that first month was so difficult because when I would, st I'm so different than Ruth that I would have to detach, I couldn't even think about myself at all. Like I completely had to just drop anything that had to do with me and just be Ruth. By the time that I went home, I was exhausted by the end of the day. So tired. Like I felt like, I don't I felt like a bus hit me or something. It was, it was like that bad. Um, <sighs> I don't know. I the hardest scene or the hardest thing. I think maybe always feeling that conflicted. Always feeling that stuck. Feeling stuck is the worst feeling. And feeling like you have that mindset that you have no way out constantly, that's really hard. And it's not even scenes where it's like she's crying or like I have to be like, you know, really emotional in the scene. It's even something like when she's taking out the trash. In the back of her mind, she's going to think like, what am I supposed to do with Marty Bird? Oh, right. I have to go back in that office. It, it, just constantly, you're just walking around conflicted basically so that was really difficult and then you have an accent on top of it and you have to be in attack mode all the time just so things won't fall apart yeah. binge watching this show is it one that is actually something about ruth that that stands out which is that she is always sort of in two places if not three or four places at the same time her father's in prison she's trying to think about what her next move is she's dealing with marty there's lots of things that she has to be at she's never sort of actually at that place her mind is in three or four different places right yeah and she also knows that she can't reveal too much. She probably because she experienced in the past that she, if she did reveal too much, you know, a lot, yeah. that's not for her favor. People will take advantage of her or, you know, yeah. um, she, ha she cannot trust anyone, basically. You're 23. We were talking uh, before we came out here. You are um, your your knowledge of film history is extraordinary, and it's something that I have not ever seen in someone 23 years old. And I don't think so. I, I don't know. I, There's I, like. No, but even, I mean, yes, but even in, in a sense of film history, in a sense of, of what makes some actors click and what others don't, I mean, where does that come from? You Watching movies, obviously, since you were a young kid. Do you, do you notice actors in a way now that maybe you hadn't as you were, you were younger, as you've become more For of a For sure, because actor? you also, un you understand yeah. what it is, you understand what the process is. But again, like, I grew up in a very artistic household. My, you know, my mother being a therapist, I think definitely it helped with my mother being, being a therapist growing up, you know, the study of people, that's what we do. We study people and we have to kind of reenact it. Um, but yeah, I just loved movies. Like I was always fascinated with actresses and actors and um, their pro. I didn't know, the thing was, I didn't know what I was fascinated by really, but I was fascinated in within that world. Um, I just didn't know that it was like a real job. Like I didn't know how that was possible kind of. So, but I remember, well, I remember the first time thinking when I watched a movie, like, oh my God, like I forgot this, that, that this is a movie. Like these, these people are so good that 
this is all fake. <laughs> They're going to eat lunch afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what a, a great program or a great movie will take you out of that and be like, yeah. right? Is it before lunch or after lunch? Right, right, right. <laughs> I'm yeah. no, it's, when you watch something like Lawrence of Arabia, you kind of forget that there's actually cameras there, right? I mean, it's amazing. Completely, yeah. completely. And you just, like, I don't know, even Rosemary's Baby, you yeah. just forget, I, I don't know, so many good movie you that's what a movie or a tv show you want that to be you want to forget about your life for like an hour or two or whatever and kind of watch someone else's yeah and let's just wrap up julie what do you know now about acting that you didn't know when you started that has sort of been sort of a revelation to you over the last like five six seven years that's a great question um I didn't know how, um, how con like you emotionally you have to be so open up constantly because again you're reacting real life um, and you just have to constantly, you have more, not everyone has this almost the same amount of emotions. It's just some people, they have, their emotions are more exposed. And I'm talking about actors. Your emotions are much more exposed because you're constantly looking for like a new emotion, basically. Like, oh, can I go further? Like, what's an even further emotion? And I'm like, whoa, I didn't even know that I had that. Like, everyone has Everyone is emotional in the same way. Um, it's just a question of if they're cutting it off, you know. And I think with acting, that really just stretches, stretches out your emotions. I mean, it could be a bad thing too, but I, for me, it's great. <laughs> so, or even to have kind of two emotions at the same time, three emotions, it all kind of. Oh yeah, but you always, jumbled. when you're yeah. acting, you always want to have at least three emotions yeah. at the same time. That's interesting. Because. It sounds so, it's so weird. It's so weird. You know what, and it also fascinates me about acting is how you have to be, on one hand, or like be in the moment. You have to be in the moment, but don't forget your mark. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, wait, it's contradicting all the time. Yeah. And it's just like, and I was telling him how Matthew Reese, he, he told me once before when we were working on The Americans, I had to like pick up, something or it was just an annoying prop and I was like this is, and they're like no 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 just you know d make sure with that timing after you say that line I'm like oh god like I don't want to be thinking about like a cup or whatever and <laughs> he was like well props are either your best friends or your worst enemy and it's so true because a prop can really help you in a scene or it can just you know mess you up. <laughs> that's, that's, that's it, because you never think about that, about the continuity of it, obviously. And you, you know, if you well, picked up that cup and it worked, you have to put it down. Yeah, you're spot. so yeah. in the moment. So it's really like, okay, be in the moment. You have to be so in the moment that you have to completely lose yourself. But you have to have six different people tell you six different things. And I'm not just talking about the, I'm not talking about the director. I'm talking about the stunt, I'm talking about the DP saying where you're supposed to land. I'm talking about, you know, a PA saying like, uh, did, do you want, do you want a warming coat or something? Like, you know, like I'm talking about every, and it's just, and then you have to like also in the same time zone out and completely block everyone out because really if you're acting in a scene, if you're that person, no, there's not going to be a DP or someone saying like land on your mark. <laughs> so it's hard. <laughs> and, and then just to wrap it up with the emotion thing, because you just said, you know, in terms of the, the emotionality of it, there's also that hard part of having the emotion but not showing the emotion, right? And to be able to have those, those three or four or six emotions going on, but not even showing any of them because you have to get to that certain spot, right? Yes. Yeah. I, this all of a sudden made me think, has anyone ever seen Whale Rider? So does anyone, actually my acting coach told me this, and I've never, I've never thought about it until I actually rewatched the movie and, and I saw what she meant. The crying scene, does anyone remember the crying scene where she's dancing? Remember how heartbreaking that scene was because she was trying like so hard not to cry? Yeah. It's much more powerful. So yeah. I guess that's... Yeah. An example. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, your work is so powerful on Ozark. Ladies and gentlemen, Julia Garner. Thank you. The TV Thank show you. is Ozark. Thank you.